Hey and welcome to day number 17 and in this video I show you the different options you have to move and to place components and bodies in a Fusion 360 design. So what you see here is the latest state of the Saurer RK7. This model was already topic of the previous video. I'm currently working on the front wheel suspension and the steering unit, but I have received quite a few questions regarding the move and copy command, the align tool, and the capture position and revert position at the very top. And because this is quite a complex topic, especially uh, when you are new to Fusion 360, I'm gonna show you how to move and how to place components and bodies in a design in this video. So let's start with a very simple setup here. And before I do anything else, I go to assembly, new component, and uh, let's call this our box component. I make sure that this one is active before I draw a new sketch on the top plane. I hit the S key on the keyboard to bring up the shortcut menu. Here I choose the rectangle, switch to the center point rectangle and draw one right on top of the origin here, like so. Then I bring up the shortcut menu again, choose the circle tool, and draw a circle again right on top of the origin and on top of our rectangle. Then I exit the sketch mode by hitting the Q key to enable the press and pull command. Then I select this part of our sketch. This turns the press and pull command into the extrude command and then I extrude the thing a little bit like so. And let me also show the component colors so that we can see the things a little bit easier. You can do this by going to inspect and click on component color cycling toggle or you can also hit shift n on your keyboard when i now open the box component and show the origin you can see that it sits perfectly in the center the same also goes for the origin of our top level assembly so it's also perfectly centered in the box component i have a bodies folder and a sketches folder and in case you do not know the difference between a body and a component i'm gonna link a short video series for you in the right hand upper corner so it's always good to know about the basics before we dive deep into more complex topics in Fusion 360 and the first option you have here so I'm gonna hide the origin of the top level assembly again the first option you have to move this body is to simply enter sketch mode and move the sketch right so I'm gonna show the sketch double click on it to enter the sketch mode then I select all of the entities, bring up the move command by hitting the W key. It's probably the M key on your end. And then I try to move the sketch entities. As you can see, we do not get a preview. And this does not work because all of these sketch lines are tied to the origin. So I'm gonna cancel the move and copy command, zoom in a little bit, click on this black dot. And when I do this, you can see that now four of these coincident constraint icons appear. I select all of them, hit the delete key, select all of the sketch entities again, bring up the move and copy command, and now I should be able to move the sketch lines away from the center or the origin like so. And I do not confirm this because you do not need to bring up the move and copy command to move the sketch lines. You can simply select all of the sketch lines and then click on a sketch entity like a line or a point and move the lines away from the center like so. And when I now exit the sketch mode and show the origin of our box component, you can see that I have moved the sketch together with the body and the body results from the sketch a little bit to the left. Now, moving the sketch is probably not best practice as you're losing a lot of your constraints and sometimes you turn a fully defined sketch into a sketch that's not fully defined anymore. And for this reason, I double click on the sketch icon again to enter sketch mode, select all of the lines and move them back right on top of the origin. Then I finish the sketch and bring up the move and copy command by hitting the W key. Again, it's the M key on the work side in case you haven't touched the shortcut key layout yet. And for the object to move, bodies is already selected. When I go over to the browser tree and select this body in the box component, this move and copy or move and rotate gizmo appears in the lower corner here. I can change this by uh, clicking on set pivot. 
Now I can choose a different position on a face of our body, also on the center. When I click here and confirm this command, I can now move the body over to the left, like so. And as soon as I confirm the move and copy command, a new move and copy feature icon gets appended to the timeline. And because this is a parametric feature, I can double click on it anytime, change the position and confirm this command again. Now, because of the fact that this is a parametric feature, it also means that the initial sketch is still on its position on the origin. And when I double click the sketch icon and make some adjustments, so let's add some dimensions to the circle, make it a little bit bigger. And when I now finish the sketch, the body that is slightly moved to the side is updated accordingly. And this is only possible because the sketch is before the extrude and the extrude command is before the move and copy command in the timeline. So if I roll the history marker over to the left, like so, then our box with a hole sits perfectly on top of the sketch. And when I move it over to the right again, after the move command, then it's moved to the left a little bit. And I can also click on the move and copy command, select it, hit the delete key on the keyboard, and then I can get rid of it. And the box sits perfectly on top of the sketch again. Now let's bring back the move and copy feature in the timeline. So I move the body over to the left again and then I hide the sketch. So now we have learned two ways to move bodies. So the first one is by moving the actual sketch. The second one is to use the move and copy command to move the body in relation to the origin uh, of the component. And the third method is to move the entire component in relation to the origin of the top level component. So it sounds pretty complex, it's actually not when I show the origin of the top level component, I can simply uh, left click on a body inside this component container and move it around in the scene or in the design. And when I do this, you can see that the uh, coordinate system and the planes of the top level assembly remain where they are and the uh, origin and the planes of the sub component inside this top level component move together with the body and the sketch. At the same time, two new functions become available in the toolbar. It's the capture position and the revert position feature. And they exactly do what their name implies. By clicking on revert, I set everything back to its initial state. And by clicking on the capture position, and now I want you to focus on what happens in the timeline here. So by clicking on it, a new position icon gets appended to the timeline or to the history. And as you can tell from the little color bar on top of the feature, it does not get applied to the uh, box component. Even if I have just moved the component, it gets applied to the top level assembly because I have changed the uh, position of the box component in relation to the origin of the top level assembly. At the same time, it also means that when you do not work with components and draw your sketches and bodies right into this top level assembly or top level component, the capture and revert function are not available. So it looks like this if I start with a new design and do not create a new component first, but start creating right in this top level component. So let me draw this box on the top plane like so. And when I now left click on it and try to move it away from the center, this is not possible. So the only option I have here is to use the move and copy command to move this body in relation to the origin. And then it looks again something like this. As soon as I introduce a new component and create a 3D primitive in it, uh, let's continue with the cylinder on the top plane then I can start to move this component around in relation to the origin of the top level assembly. And when I do this, also the capture and the revert function become available again. And when I click on capture position, nothing changes for the actual component. But as soon as I switch back to the top level assembly, you can see that the position icon gets appended to the end of the timeline. And let's create one more. So let's get rid of this position 
function first, and then I create an additional component again in the top level assembly here, draw another 3D primitive like the torus on the top plane, make it a little bit smaller. And I can now move both components in the design. And when I'm happy with the position, I capture it. And again, this one gets captured for both components in the history or in the timeline of the top level component. And you can also always double click on this position feature to enter this position environment. And here you can use the move and copy and the align command to adjust the position of both components. So I'm going to bring up the align command, select the bottom of the cylinder and place it on top of the box. And then I can confirm it and exit the position environment. And this way I have adjusted the position of this component without adding an extra position feature to the timeline. Repositioning components by simply left clicking on them and moving them around in the design is the exact same thing than using the move command with the object to move set to components, except that this move and copy dialog box here gives me a little bit more control so I can use the rotate and the move gizmo to place the component in the design. And when you confirm this without checking capture position, then you still have to capture the position yourself. So this adds a new capture position icon to the timeline. I'm going to undo this and bring up the move and copy command one more time, select this component, move it to the side, check the capture position first, then click on OK. And this way Fusion 360 captures the position on the fly automatically and adds a new capture position icon to the timeline. When we briefly recap this, we can note that a body inside a component can only be moved with the move and copy command in relation to the origin of the component. You can move an entire component in relation to the origin of the top level assembly by simply left clicking on it or by using the move and copy command or the align tool. But then you have to capture the position and everything that is drawn or that is stored directly in the top level assembly, like this body here, can only be moved with the move and copy command. Also keep in mind that when you move a component and then apply an additional function like the extrude command here, Fusion prompts you with this message that some components have been moved. So you have to decide what you want to do. If you continue, then Fusion sets back everything to its initial state. If you click on capture position, it's the same like clicking on the capture position icon in the toolbar. So I'm going to do this and then a new capture position icon appears in the timeline. There is one more way to move objects and components in a design and this is by using joints. So I revert the position first, then I go to assembly joint and I place the torus on top of our cylinder. The motion type is already set to rigid, so I confirm this command. And when I now move the component, the torus follows because both are connected with this rigid joint. I can also capture the position here. So as you can see, I have a joint icon or joint feature in the timeline. And as soon as I click on capture position, a uh, position icon follows. To complete today's video, let's take a look at how everything that we have learned so far comes together on an example that's a little bit more practical. Now I start with an empty design and before I create a component, let's start with a sketch on the top plane. I choose the rectangle again, switch to the center rectangle and draw one at the origin. Uh, let's turn this into a fully defined sketch by adding some dimensions, 15 and 10. And then I'm also going to turn these lines into construction lines by selecting all of them, hitting the X key on the keyboard. And then I finish the sketch. Now it's time to create a component. So I create a new one, call this um, cylinder. Make sure that this one is active. And then I go to um, the sketch command again and draw a new sketch on the top plane. And here, and this is another example on how to adjust the position of bodies and sketches in a design, we can project the point here from the uh, sketch that sits in the top level assembly by hitting the P key, or by selecting it first, hitting the P key, and then I draw 
a circle right on top of this point add some dimensions so again this is a fully defined sketch i exit sketch mode by hitting the q key add an extrusion of two centimeters and now i could drive the position of this body by simply um, double clicking on the sketch that sits in the top level assembly and adjusting the values here so let's try something like 25 and as you can see the cylinder moves with the point of the underlying sketch so i want you to forget about this for a moment because i'm not going to use it so um, let's delete this sketch i end up with a warning that the point that i was projecting from this initial sketch is no longer valid so i'm gonna delete it so it's this one here and now i should be able to move the circle back to the origin so it snaps to the origin and at the same time a coincident constraint gets applied to it i finish the sketch and now i make sure that i'm on the cylinder component before i create a new sketch on the top plane i start the sketch tool select the top plane and here i continue with a circle add a diameter of one centimeter extrude it and you can already tell by the color that we are dealing with two bodies in one component and in the next step i use the align command make sure that the object is set to bodies then i select the bottom center of the small cylinder and place it on top of the big one like so and now it looks a little bit like an example that i was already showing in a previous video because i use the move command again the object has to be set to bodies then i select the small cylinder move it a little bit closer to the edge like so go to the create drop down menu select circular pattern pick this body and select our top plane here as the axis and for the quantity I try something like eight and then I end up with something like this. Even if the component now consists of several different bodies, I can click on the surface and move the entire component around. And uh, like you are already aware by now, I would have to capture the position or revert the positions. I'm gonna go for revert here and then i create a new component in the top level assembly and i call this my axis i switch to the front view start a new sketch extrude this guy and then again i could move both components simultaneously and capture their position that's not what i'm gonna do what i do instead is i right click on the axis and ground it so when you do this and switch to the top level assembly, a new ground icon uh, appears in the timeline. So this means I cannot move this guy around anymore. And then I attach the first component to the second with the help of the join command. So I uh, pick the center of the bottom part first, then the center of the axis. The uh, type of motion is already set to revolute. So I'm gonna keep it as it is. And now I can rotate the first component with the help of this axis, like so. And I could also capture the position. So that's uh, something that I'm not gonna do. I revert it. And because everything is parametric and because we have everything stored in the history down here, I can always go back and let's say, I'm gonna change the height of the big cylinder. So the small objects or the small cylinders follow. I could, for instance, also choose a different um, surface or a different plane for the uh, align command. So let's try the um, bottom plane here and I'm gonna flip this guy. So we have these pins on the other side now. The joint is still uh, functional and then I can also double click on the move command one more time, move these guys a little bit closer to the center. Let's see if the pattern command still works yeah it does and with a combination of the move commands the align command and the capture position you have several different options to move and to place components and bodies in a fusion 360 design that's it for today's video thank you very much for tuning in if you have any questions leave them in the comment section below i try to answer all of them and subscribe for more Fusion 360 related content and see you in the next one.